The faith community has always served as a beacon of hope in trying times. And this election is no different. We are going to remember this moment forever. The moment we chose joy and freedom as a new way forward. Some say faith and politics don't mix, but freedom and hope do. Seeing people from all different backgrounds races, religions, and genders gather to show their support and enthusiasm for Kamala, Kamala Harris, Harris is church. She exudes integrity, dignity, humanity, and empathy. And she can reach across the aisle, any aisle, and get things done. That's what we need in the White House. The time is now. The time is now. This moment, right now, each of us are called to our own vineyard. This is Kamala's. When our sister wins, we, we all, all win. win. Vote for Kamala Harris by November the 5th. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. You know, one of the things that has been exposed this year is how most black churches are what I call church plants. Church plants and they do the bidding of the white liberal puppet masters. They do the bidding of the Democratic Party. They are there in the black community to keep the black community in a permanent state of victimhood, keeping them enslaved to the agenda of the Democratic Party. As we've seen with the results of the recent election, people are waking up to the agenda of the black church. They're waking up to the agenda of the so-called black church in the black community. They realize that the black church is there to sabotage the black community, is there to sabotage black Christians because they do not represent biblical values. They do not stand for things that are in alignment with what we consider Christianity. They practice churchianity. They practice this social gospel stuff. They practice things that are not in alignment with the word of God. And we saw it continuously throughout this election season. We saw how black preachers stood in their pulpit and gave license to people that want to do things that are against the word of God, gave them license to speak in their pulpit. We saw a number of gospel artists campaigning for people that are against God, campaigning for people that are pushing things like the LGBTQ radical agenda, pushing the unaliving of our children, pushing the influx of these illegal immigrants to take resources away from people in the community. Beloved, to beat a xenophobic, white nationalist, white supremacist, bona fide racist, known sexist, documented bigot, celebrated insurrectionist, election denier, wannabe politician, four times indicted, twice impeached, recognized sexual assaulter, convicted fraud perpetrator, and 91 felon charges in four states, who doesn't give a, I'm sorry, I'm in church, a blankety blank about black people if the black church and especially if this black church is not united and together in one place. Beloved, if we are going to advance our people, we've got to be what? Together. Biden was pressured into stepping down last Sunday after church and then Biden pulled a fast one and said, all right, since I'm going to step down, I'm going to tap Kamala Harris to step up. And y'all, been messing around and finding out because that night black women got on a call with 44,000 black women raised one and a half million dollars because America's gonna mess around and find out black men were encouraged got on a call the next night 53,000 registered raised 1.3 million dollars because the country's gonna mess around and find Black people have historically been a moral witness demanding this democracy include all who yearn to breathe free. I believe the choice this November is not between two candidates, but two visions of this nation. One vision romanticizes the Confederate mythology that was birthed from the antebellum South. Another vision still sees America as the yet to be United States of America. I cannot support any vision. You can work, vote for whoever you want to, but I cannot support any vision that speaks to making America great again because my conscience 
and my soul tell me when a person states America with the past tense language was great, I must speak up and say, what year are you talking about? Where are the sisters in Beulah Baptist Church who can testify that I'm that girl? Where are the African-American women around the sanctuary who can testify I am the living testimony of what it means to be black girl magic? A powerful Zoom call where over 164,000 white women broke Zoom and raised over $8.5 million. Solomon's example, Solomon's example, and black girl magic. I'm Kamala becoming the presidential nominee. I, I, I'm going to confess. I, I wasn't too happy about that. But I'm all in now. I'm 100% I'm, I'm, I'm now for this reason. This, this representative from, from Tennessee, sorry Connie, from Tennessee, he called her a DEI candidate. And then they start calling her colored. And then they start calling her out of her name. And as a black man, I can't let no white man talk about no sister like that. And, and I not take offense to it. Because who is more disqualified than Donald Trump? And Republicans are all in because he is the avatar for their grievance. How qualified does a black person have to be? Graduated at the top of her class at Howard, went to law school, was attorney general of a state, a United States senator, a vice president of the United States, but she's not qualified? I'm all in. Because I'm not going to let any white man tell me how I ought to feel about a black person. Stony the road we've tried. I am going to endorse her. I'm with her. I wish I had somebody else that would go with her. We cannot allow, we cannot allow ourselves to be caught up in the hype and to deal, let me tell you, I ain't calling no names. Tell somebody, he ain't calling no names. But that other person is a convicted felon. That other person, that uh, somebody say other person. That other person lies repeatedly, right in your face. And then do, do their hands all like that. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he or she, y'all ain't talking to me, including the presidency, how can they preach? Oh, y'all didn't catch that, did you? Except men look in the refrigerator, they announce there's no food, a woman go in there and come out with a meal. And that's what's about to happen for America. Men go in there. We need somebody with a vision. I didn't say who it is, but we need someone. I see some of y'all who've been stuck on prophets that keep on cheering certain people. But God's going to give us what's best for us. He's not given us someone to prove we are prophet. He's given us someone to turn the nation back to God. I told my church, I ain't ashamed to say it because y'all think I'm crazy, but ten of you need to talk to me. I told them last year, 2024, not in presidency or etc., is the year of the woman. And certain men won't say amen because you like controlling them, but every now and then, you got to let them do what they do because if it wasn't for prophetess Deborah, Barack would have been killed. You know, you got to, if it wasn't for Ruth and Naomi, y'all ain't talking to me, and Tamar and Rahab, there would be no Jesus. Every now and then, 
We gotta do our roles, men. We gotta raise what they carry. All right. Immigrants are regularly scapegoated in a fashion that strains credulity, and yet unscrupulous people will pounce at the opportunity to savage the stranger because the tycoon yeah. from Mar-a-Lago forwarded nonsense. He swallowed all from the social media without a shred of evidence about Haitians eating dogs, cats, geese in Springfield, Ohio. Who the hell does he think he is? You said something is wrong with brothers who don't know how to support a sister. Yeah. Full and stop. <laughs> <laughs> and Mordecai was man enough to know that in order for me to be a man, I got to know how to support a woman. Something is wrong with brothers who don't know how to support a sister. It was a sister that raised you. It was a sister that taught you how to read. It was a sister that taught you how to bathe yourself. In the context of the vice president, were you trying to send a message? Uh, yeah, uh, that um, uh, we've got to be able to vote that misogyny is still real. Uh, in our community. Um, we've got to address it head on and act like, not act like it doesn't exist. Uh, the reality is if black men had voted, Stacey Abrams would be a governor. Uh, and so I think that we've got to do some real redress uh, that uh, after racism, the biggest ill in America is sexism. Uh, and I think it's part of the responsibility of this generation to deal with it head on. I said this on last Sunday, that this is the most crucial and critical election, at least of my lifetime, that is coming up. <clears throat> it is something we cannot play with. We cannot play with. I, I tell people all the time, this is not about history. It's about destiny. And the destiny will happen to make history. Now, I can't tell y'all what to do, you know, the rules. I, I did have a call this week with one of the lawyers from the Harris Walls campaign and told me what I, I could tell y'all what I'm going to do. I just can't tell y'all what to do. So I can tell y'all what I know what I'm going to do. Ain't no doubt in my mind what I'm going to do. The only walls that I'm talking about are not the walls he lied about putting up it's the walls we gonna put in as vice president and the Harris that I choose me not Bishop Rudolph Waldo McKissick jr. born September 24th 1965 and is a citizen of the United States that's what I'm gonna do I cannot tell you as a church what to do I cannot tell you anything like that but I'm telling you it is the choice between progress and petulance an 80 year old child trying to run the country I love now I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna let pastor introduce our, our guest for those who might be saying, I don't see how you can support anybody that would be in favor of killing our children. That's an that's a argument y'all don't want to have. Because if y'all want to go to the Bible and claim that a person doesn't support the Bible, he's an adulterer. That's in the Bible. He's a bigot. That's in the Bible. He's a liar. That's in the Bible. And y'all don't support our children when they get out the womb. So don't go to the Bible to try to tell me why I ought not support somebody. Because your candidate breaks sins every day. And secondly, the United States ain't a church. It's a country. This ain't about discipleship. It's about citizenship. Now in here, that might be a different story. But in the country, every citizen gets rights. That's just my 
Lord, take because I'm so sick of folk on social media. How in the world are you supporting when uh, I can't support anybody who kills babies? Oh, I almost said bear word. You, you supporting a candidate and a party that kills our children, that wants to do away with health care, that wants to do away with mothers having the money they need for daycare so they, they could go back to work. You want to do away with all of that? Please hold your righteous indignation and your one trick pony for somebody who don't know the Bible. Because that, that ain't a dialogue y'all want to... Okay, I'm done. I'm sorry. This side suggests a black vote for Donald Trump could lead to a form of slavery. If Donald Trump can control what we study and read or control our wages, we'll be substandard to him. The word of Jordan's political messaging reached Montgomery. On social media, Republican Lieutenant Governor Will A. Responsible for Republican, but he's thinking from a, 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 a Republican point of view. Donald Trump make sad, pitiful, negative statements about people every day. But Jordan's political points don't stop with cotton-picking threats. He hurls serious insults at any effort. The Negro, as it says in your son, you may offend people that may want to come to your church? No, um, they know point blank. It's an ear catcher. And see, I wanted to play that because will the black church apologize? Will these black preachers apologize for not standing up for the word of God, for bending the knee to culture? They will not because that is what the black church is there for. That is what the church plant pastors are there for. They are there to keep the black community in bondage. And that's why straight black men, for the most part, do not attend these kind of churches because these kind of churches do not open the door and are not welcoming or are not conducive to having strong men who want to stand on biblical values, who want to lead their families, who want to lead a community the way that God ordained it to be. People that want to do that as men are not welcome in these church. These churches are there for liberal feminists, male feminists and female feminists. That's what they've turned into. They've turned into locations that are catering to these feminists. And they cater to the whims of the liberal puppet masters that control them. They cater to the whims of the culture. They cater to whatever suits the pastor instead of whatever suits the word of God. And that's the difference. Because as a church, you're supposed to be reflective of your head. The head of the church is Christ. So whenever a local church does not reflect Christ, you can know that church is not a part of the body of Christ. And these black churches are not a part of the body of Christ. Yeah, I said it. They are not a part of the body of Christ because they're standing for things that are anti-God, anti-biblical. So will these black preachers apologize? I doubt it. I think they'll double down on this. As a matter of fact, I think they're going to criticize a number of black men for actually voting against Kamala Harris. You mark my words because all they want to do is keep the black community in a permanent state of victimhood. Well, we're not victims. We are empowered for greatness.